This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this. Now, I know I'm supposed to be off this week and not sending videos, but sometimes something happens in my life, in my heart, where the chance to talk about it together with you is just deeply meaningful to me. And this is one of those days. I'm sitting right now way back down in the screen. I know that won't work, so I'll shift in a minute, but I'm doing it for a reason. Uh, I have this new, very cool kind of shirt jacket and it says habit on the front and it says habit on the back. And it was a gift. Two of you, a couple of friends sent that to me and I'm so grateful because it reminds me of the importance of this category of habit. And I want you to know, I'm gonna wear this shirt every day until my wife comes to embrace the importance and beauty of the category of habit as deeply as Jesus and I do. I'm, I'm actually very grateful to be married to somebody who helps make me think about how do I communicate? How do we talk about spiritual life in a way that will be accessible and compelling to everybody and not just uh, a cloistered, odd little group of people who are wired up the same as me? So, um, thanks, for <laughs> thanks for that. Here's what I wanted to tell you. I wanna to talk to you about your purpose in life and something that I learned from scripture and the juxtaposition of that with uh, movie that Nancy and I saw last night. What does that mean for you today? In the book of Acts, in the 20th chapter, Paul is saying farewell to the elders, to the leaders at the church in Ephesus, and he loves them and they love him dearly. We're told that uh, they weep when it's time for him to depart. But here's what he said that struck me in particular. He was saying to them, I need to leave. The Holy Spirit has told me, I don't know what the future holds, but I know that in every city that I go to, prison and hardship, danger await me. And then he says, but my life is worth nothing to me. What matters is that I finish the course and fulfill the task that God has given to me to announce the gospel of grace, the possibility of living in the favor and the presence and the goodness of God in his world. And I think what Paul is saying in there when he says my life means nothing to me is not that he doesn't embrace or that we are not to embrace the goodness of existence. What a good thing it is that you are alive and you need to accept that and receive that as part of God's grace. And what a good thing it is that there is this world that God made and every beat of your heart, every breath of air in your lungs is a gift, the spirit breath of God to you. But there's a real important uh, distinction for Paul that he makes, and I was thinking about it kind of like this, that I can discover and deeply value my purpose in life, or my life can simply just become about my survival. And I think what Paul is saying is not that he doesn't embrace and love life or people, but that his sense of calling the meaning of his life is so deep for him that if survival gets in the way of it, if he has to choose what will maximize the possibility of mere survival as opposed to what will maximize the achieving of his mission, his purpose in life, he will choose purpose every time. That mere survival doesn't matter compared to the task that lies before him. And now part of the reason for that, part of the message that Jesus brings to us is that God has taken care of the survival issue. That death itself cannot cause me to stop surviving. That whoever trusts Jesus will not taste death. And that's why Paul is able to say, for me, uh, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Because if I am absent from the body, then I will, in some amazing way, be at home with God. And the strange thing is, that, and this is just true for human beings, but we see it particularly lived out in Jesus and in his followers, where there is a burning sense of purpose, then life itself becomes meaningful. But if we live only in order to survive without purpose, survival itself becomes unbearable. And that's one of the reasons why evolution as not simply a theory of how life progressed and developed, but as the ultimate framework for looking at human existence does not work because it doesn't tell us why to survive. And survival apart from purpose, apart from meaning, becomes unbearable. 
Now, of course, you're not Paul and neither am I. So what does this mean for us? And that's where I wanted to tell you about Nance and I saw a movie last night. It's called A Man Called Otto. Um, I won't spoil it with the whole thing, but I'll tell you the key parts. It's actually based on uh, a Swedish movie and actually before that, a Swedish book. Most great art is Scandinavian. I don't know why. God just made things that way. And it's the story of this quite grumpy old curmudgeon played by the actor Tom Hanks. And for a variety of reasons, he has decided that his life has become unbearable and not worth living, and he wants to end it. And he tries to do that in a series of ways. And then over a period of time, he's not giving away too much to let you know that he discovers there is a purpose for him. There is a task for him to do. It's very small. It's not like the Apostle Paul to travel all around the world and uh, be the one who brings the message and person of Jesus to the Gentiles and be the architect of the world's most influential movement that would call the church. It's like teaching a neighbor how to drive and helping to take care of little children and fixing the bicycle of a young transgender person that used to be a student of his wife and that is not wanted anymore. In these very small ways, in these very insignificant looking moments, in these very uh, obscure acts, he discovers, no, there is a task for me. There is a purpose for me. And therefore, my existence is a good thing. So the question that that raises today is, what is your purpose? And I don't mean that it's got to be some big, grand, hyper-religious, Apostle Paul-looking kind of thing. Not at all. It could be like that of a man called Otto. I think of a person who is quite young inviting a person who is quite old to come and to live with her because she has needs in her life that that old person could fulfill and that old person has space and a desire for purpose that that relationship with a young person can fulfill and then there can be beauty and then there can be a giving of selves and a meaning and a purpose. It could be a person that lives next door to you. It could be fixing a bike. It could be just simply doing your job in Jesus' name with Jesus together with you in it. It could be taking care of his creation a little bit. It could be listening to somebody that nobody else is listening to. It could be connecting with talking to somebody that nobody else is talking to. It could be caring for somebody for whom nobody else cares. You have a purpose. You have a task that God has given you. And you don't have to worry about what does that mean in terms of, you know, my education or degree or job. Those are questions worth thinking about deeply. But not knowing the answers to them cannot get in the way of the fact that this day God has given to you again the gift of life and God has a task for you. God has a meaning for you. And if you devote yourself to that, then all of a sudden life has a meaning and purpose that it does not have if my only goal is survival. So today, don't worry about survival. I know some of you face this in real deep ways. I know that real deeply. But our friend Jesus has taken care of that. He really has. Death itself will not be able to get in the way of your existence together with God, your friendship with Him. So don't worry about that today. God, what do you have for me to do? What's the grand adventure today? Who will I see? What moment will emerge? What task is yet to be done? How can I run the course today? Love is habit for me. I love you.